Welcome to What Are You Doing in Denmark, the podcast that helps you make Denmark make sense. My name is Derek, and I've been living in Denmark since 2017. And I'm Annie Samples. I've been living in Denmark since 2019, and today we have a truly enlightening conversation for you. Whether you've packed your bags and moved to a new country, or you've contemplated that kind of move, you probably learned that it's not always a fairy tale reboot in a new location. It can be a complete upheaval of life as you know it. From navigating a new culture to creating a new social circle from scratch, the journey can be as daunting as it is exciting. But what about the impact on your mental health? How do you cope with the psychological twists and turns of living abroad? Today, we're joined by a very special guest, Nana Hawk, a licensed psychotherapist who specializes in mental health for expats and foreigners in Denmark. She brings years of experience in helping individuals manage the emotional ups and downs of living abroad to today's show. So keep it right here on What Are You Doing in Denmark? Welcome, Nana. It's so Thanks. exciting to have you here because uh, Annie and I really needed a good therapy yeah. session. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And yeah. if you Annie guys, especially, yeah. <laughs> 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 no, literally. And if you guys follow me on social media at all, something I talk about a lot is my mm. mental health journey in relation to being a foreigner in a mm. foreign country. So I'm super glad you're here. I'm yeah. so glad we could finally make this happen. I yeah. can totally relate. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. And so we'd yeah. love to hear about your expat experience. Mm-hmm. So it's it's so nice that you have that and can relate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um Nan, I think we know a little bit of what you're doing in Denmark because mm-hmm. this is your homeland, of yeah. course. <laughs> but um can you maybe tell us a bit about the journey? And what sort of, you know, more of the what are you doing part? So I know, uh, you know, as a as a therapist, especially with the focus on on expats, how did Mm -hmm. you get there, and uh, and what is it that you're that you're doing with our community? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, and thank you for inviting me. I'm so excited, and I can totally relate to being an expat, foreign country, small kids. I've been there, (laughs) done that. Mm -hmm. I've also got the T-shirt. I think. Yeah, (laughs) perfect. Yeah, great. I th- at least we should have a T-shirt. We need oh, a yeah. T-shirt. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but I'm I'm Danish, so I was born here, and so what I'm doing here is I'm back here after having actually been abroad uh, four times. Uh, oh. As a very young wow. person studying in the U.S., as a young professional, I would say working in France, and as a student, master student again living in France, but bringing then my husband and my first child, and then. Fourth time was sort of the, the the defining moment of me being an expat because I left Denmark as a sort of fairly newly educated young you know professional um, had to quit my job to follow my mm-hmm. hus- then husband uh, as an accompanying uh, spouse with our three kids to go to live in Switzerland and that's oh, back wow. in two thousand nine. And that journey kind of, or that was kind of maybe the this, this starting point of what I do now because I have a background from CBS, Copenhagen Business School in Intercultural Leadership. So I was working in corporate life and had to sort of give that up for a while mm. to take care of my kids as yeah. we sort of entered into a new culture. And that, so it's back then that I started looking at, so what kind of support systems are there? Mm. Uh, what does the literature say? Where can I get some, uh, you know, where can I get some support? Because this is kind of tough. Uh, and I was kind of surprised that I didn't, really I didn't find that much Mm -hmm. and I at least I didn't find very much that was available online right so in in that sense corona has done a lot for us to sort Mm. of get support online also and that then sort of led to me diving into the psychological aspects of expat life global mobility long story short came back to Denmark in 2014 that released what I call or what's called mm. reversed culture shock yeah. yeah and that really sort of sparked because I actually also did work in Switzerland for a couple of years also corporate but that really sort of that return really sparked my interest to sort of dive into the psychological aspects of expat life and here I am that's so cool. 10 years later uh, I'm a psychotherapist and I work now with private clients internationals all over the world and companies that are attracting Mm. international talent Mm. here in Denmark to onboard and have good sort of inclusion and intercultural relations, I would say. Yeah. 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 It's so needed. And it's a journey that that you've been on and Mm -hmm. one that, that we can relate to. And I'm sure that you (laughs) probably are, are helping a lot of people with the same sorts of Things that that we've dealt with. Um, Annie and I did a a whole episode on kind of the the trailing spouse uh, experience Mm -hmm. and and what that can be like. 
it's funny. Somebody actually said in the comments section, well, I, we use the term accompanying yeah. spouse. And I was like, yeah. well, that's a cuter way to say it. But right. trailing really captures, in my opinion, it does. the the experience mm-hmm. because you give up something to kind of trail behind your mm-hmm. partner. Right. At uh, least right. it can feel like that for and sure. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I definitely think words matter and whatever ty- whatever term somebody feels most comfortable with, mm-hmm. use that. But mm-hmm. to me, I thought, no, no, uh, that <laughs> yeah. to me, a better uh, exemplifies yeah. that. Now, I know that's one group that you especially yeah. work with. Yeah. Can you tell us maybe if there's some common struggles or common outcomes you find for couples especially that are, yeah. are going through Absolutely. this experience? Yeah, yeah, because that is true. That is really sort of a, a key area. I'm a couples therapist, family and couple therapist. Oh. But so I work mainly with couples um, and a lot of trailing, accompanying, yeah. co, or, you know, <laughs> there's, yeah. you know, lots of names for this. And, and like you say, it depends on, you know, it, it words do matter. I tend to say accompanying. Mm, okay. Because sometimes it can feel a little alienating to be called mm. a trailing spouse, sure. like trailing along <laughs> and tagging mm. along, right? But it, I'm sure, you know, it yeah, does feel like yeah. that. I certainly yeah, felt does, that yeah. way. And so what, what we see also from research is that one of the sort of key topics is for, for accompanying spouses is uh, the identity. Mm. And sort of the shift in couple dynamics can really sort of bring about some issues where it can be difficult to sort of untangle what is this about, right? And so the work that I do uh, to support these couples is it's couple therapy, but it's also really sort of being able to support the the trailing spouse in trying to sort of regain a sense of identity, mm-hmm. sense of purpose. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of stuff can happen when we shift into a new culture. The dynamic in the relationship changes. Yes. Uh, lots of partners have maybe difficulties finding a job at first if yeah. that's what they want. If they don't want a job, mm. that's also something, right? Not everyone wants a traditional job. Uh, so how can we then, you know, go about having a life that works for both of us and for the kids, if there are any kids? Right. Might be a little premature to talk about this this concept of hero's journey, but it's a, a really sort of good narrative to talk about how the expat journey and the journey of a trailing spouse can also be kind of a hero's journey in mm. to finding sort of your purpose in life, figuring out, you know, who am I in this setting? Uh, going back to sort of, uh, you know, empowering and feeling authentic in what you do. And so I think a lot of the struggles for couples come from sort of the shift in in dynamics mm, yeah. and then this sort of insecurity. In, who am I in this setting? How can I hold on to, you know, my cultural values, uh, my identity in this setting and at the same time try to sort of uh, adapt, fit in, integrate. Mm. Got lots of name for that too, yeah. right? But still be who I am, right? So there are tons of little side effects yeah. emotionally to uprooting and moving to a new country. Yeah, And I mean, true. those are what I call expat heroes because that's just brave. <laughs> and yeah. you can learn. I liked your article in Balings, right? Because oh, you yeah. can really take that opportunity to learn something about yourself, yeah. about your partner, about your kids. It, it, I couldn't really uh, predict all of those changes that I was, I had never left the country before. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, there was no way that I could have really predicted that. And everything that you said is just so spot on. So it's it's uh, very affirming hearing that's mm. such a common experience. We're all in the same boat in that yeah. sense, right? It's mm. really this sort of stepping into the unknown. And this is where also, again, this hero's journey frame is 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 great to talk about because it's, it's this American Joseph Campbell who mm-hmm. who did a lot of research into mythology, big stories, all sort of, sort of movies, religions. Across that, there's kind of a he found a monomyth, mm. which is hero's journey. We step onto the unknown. We're called to adventure. <laughs> we meet helpers. We meet resistance. We meet dragons and mm-hmm. fight those. And it's all part of this personal growth journey. So stepping on into the unknown is sort of literally also stepping into something unknown in yourself, right? Mm-hmm. And that's how mm-hmm. I support couples, expats, sort of, you know, it's not an overnight thing. But if they run into struggles, burnout, stress, depression, anxiety, that framework with all the different therapeutic tools 
can be really helpful yeah. for internationals. It's yeah. a really important um, framework to go into like a therapy session with because if it was just, you know, sometimes I've considered maybe doing like um, – like better help and getting oh, it, you right. know just mm -hmm. to have like the yeah. English speaking standpoint. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. But then I th then I think you know that that person's not really going to understand this individual experience unless they have had it themselves mm -hmm. of being uh, yeah an expat or an immigrant. Yeah. And so it's really important to have that lens. Not only are you addressing the expat issues, but a lot of these expat issues can sort of trigger things like anxiety or exactly. depression or that yeah. sort of thing. Exactly. So it's really important to address it that way. Yeah. And I think really it, it deserves more uh, attention in a way, mm. not to say, oh, it's, it's hard or, you know, not to sort of put it into a negative uh, conversation, totally. but to really break the taboo that you know, strong, resourced, talented people, you know, it is it's it is tough when you are brute and you have to start from scratch, like you said also yeah. many times, like you have to create a new social circle, yeah. you have to find friends and welcome to Denmark, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Watch out when you arrive because if it's during winter, yeah. <laughs> right, well, and that's the, the too, yeah. straight way for yeah. an expat depression, I would say guess right yeah, yeah i i was lucky enough to have arrived in may the end of may yeah, it was smart. so lovely <laughs> <laughs> um, but then when winter set in i was like yeah. oh god what have we done yeah um but it is interesting and i think it is important to cast a light on these issues mm -hmm. but also not frame it negatively yeah because i'm sure you've heard this from plenty of clients mm -hmm. A lot of people don't feel like they can or should discuss these things because, you know, for instance, moving from the U.S., people are like, what do you have to complain about? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, you've got it so much better in Denmark. You're just going to you're going to move there. Everybody mm -hmm. speaks English. It's the happiest country. You're going to be so happy. No problems. Like, I would trade places with you in a heartbeat. It's like, I, I get I get it. But like. <laughs> Yeah, there is, a, yeah I, I agree. I think there's a little bit of guilt. Um, yeah, guilt. And mm. you already Interesting. have... You already yeah. have certain stigmas that exist around owning your mental health struggles. Absolutely. Right. And I think it's compounded when you, on the surface and on paper, have a lot of things to be happy about or, right. or yeah. some yeah. privileges that others don't. Oh, uh, absolutely. I mean, it's this... What about ism? Right. Yes, yes. What about the and sure we're I think all three talking from a privileged place. A million percent. But nonetheless, you can have emotional struggles. You can have children that you move from one country to another mm. that experience hardship that you haven't seen before. Mm. Uh, you know, you can have difficulties in your relationship. Yeah. You can have a crisis in terms of what are you going to do here? Are you going to stay? When's the right time to move on? Da 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 da. I mean. The, the, it's also important, I think, in this talk to really mention that this group is so diverse. I mean, mm. expats, internationals, wherever they are, it's a really diverse group. Come, you know, move for all kinds of different reasons. And the relativity is important to remember. What are we coming from? I mean, mm. are we here uh, because we wanted to? Uh, are we here because mm. our partner dragged us here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, is it because it, the opportunities here are much better than where we come from and we'll suck up whatever is uh, presented to us because we don't complain? All those mm. kind, you know, that's my concern. Mm. And I see actually also quite a lot of North American uh, internationals here where we, we are very spoiled in Denmark f having a social security system, mm. right? We, we don't realize it always, right? Mm. It's the bias that, but I see from a lot of other cultures that they, you know, the performance cultures they come from will not allow themselves to sort of tap into the Danish work-life balance mm. as easily. Oh, so, so true. true. <laughs> yeah, right? And so I've had so many clients, you know, who just sort of, I have to almost tell them, you know, you can take first child sick day off. You can go to the dentist. You can tell your boss you're going to be half day late next week because you have a doctor's appointment. Right. Right? And they don't. Yeah. Um, so I think there's something there also where we've talked about this a little bit where Danish companies, even global, right, need to also understand that the Nordic leadership and the Danish leadership style doesn't always just accommodate mm. the internationals that come in. They need to be more than just invited. Oh, my door is always open. Right. 
you know, if you're from a culture where you don't go into your boss's office just like uninvited, yeah, you, then you carry all these different uh, insecurities and struggles da, 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 on your own. And that's where I see people, right? Because they're burned out or, you it's know, It's hard to really kind of data anxious. dump that, uh, mm. that, that hierarchy. Uh, yeah, it's a flat mindset. hierarchy. And I think, you know, growing up here, I'm spoiled too. I mean, <laughs> I just expected. And then I worked in France. Uh, and I was oh. like, whoa. <laughs> whoa. Whole different ball Excuse game. me, madame. Right? <laughs> I, oh, wow. I, a whole other ball game. Yeah. I worked in Switzerland oh. too. In the last couple of years, we lived there. And it's a different, uh, it's just a different working culture also. Mm. It's fun. It's interesting. That's where you develop. But it's, it's. I think Danes tend to forget how how for granted we take this egalitarian mm. homogene homogenic yeah. culture yeah. is that how yeah. we say it yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 well and then something that i feel can sort of lend to that issue is the fact that i think this is just something that i've seen as a mom getting kids to go to school is that danes sort of assume that everybody knows what's going on all the time and mm. don't think to like point out certain things like yes you should walk into your boss's office and tell them what's up mm -hmm. nobody would even think to tell them that or like this is the lunchbox that you get of mm. course and this is where you get you know there's so many things that you can't know if you've mm -hmm. never been here before mm -hmm. never lived here before that People don't think to tell you, and it, I, I don't know how to create a resource around that, but I want to so much. I mean, and I do yeah. as much as I can, mm -hmm. but it can be so, so nuanced, right? Yeah. Yeah. It is, and I think it's part, partly also part of the journey, True, you know, as mm. an international that you have to stay really alert and curious and try to figure out and decode the different, <laughs> you know, cultural codes. It's mm. also part of the excitement of the journey, mm. and it creates a lot of overwhelm also right oh, yeah. talking yeah. about the culture shock you know that's where that kicks in when it's like whoa you know i can't even find milk yeah. i can't find you know you know like you say what to bring for birthdays or mm -hmm, how right. do i address people at work uh you know at different occasions friday cake you know the list is endless yeah. <laughs> it's it's the fun part of going into a new culture, I think, yeah. partly. But I think it's also important to to just talk about that that is also overwhelming. It's a lot mm -hmm. of stimuli at once, right? Yeah, so I, I think that's cool to frame it as the fun part because as an American and as somebody that feels like I need to like look like I'm in control and know mm -hmm. what's going on all the time, I mm -hmm. didn't ever frame it like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No. But I, I like yeah. that perspective. Yeah, just yeah. a fun discovery to make. That's cool. But uh, maybe that is also then part of, you know, this letting go a little bit. And again, mm. depends on where you come from, depends on your personality, the culture you grew up in, how much you can sort of allow yourself to let go. You know, how dangerous is it to mm -hmm. not be in control of everything? Yeah. Obviously, and cultures are different. I mean, I certainly felt that pressure moving to Switzerland, which is, okay. you know, talk about a coconut country. Oh, yeah. right. Denmark is a coconut country, but it's I mean, like you've got like hardest. double coconut <laughs> shell there. <laughs> <laughs> you get into one shell. Oh, you were like, wow. and I, I love Switzerland. And I loved living there for, you know, a lot of reasons. I also found it extremely difficult to get social relations. And yeah. that is mm. tough to always be a stranger in the place where you live, right? Yeah. Um, How do you think it's perceived to be like, sort to let go and be a sort of out of control by nationals? I don't know because I'm always give it worried a try. About, yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm always worried yeah. about people being like this yeah. idiot. She doesn't know mm. what's going on ever. And yeah, but I a, think I know. understandably so. And I mean, yeah. you want to yeah. you want to sort of try to adapt and and fit into the culture. But I also think that is where a lot of the identity problems mm. come from, and a yeah. lot of emotional struggle, mental struggle is that people try really hard and. That's also, in a sense, good. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. right? The, yeah. But we also don't want to lose who we are. That's the whole identity question, right? And so it's part of the process. But I really also do think that's where we need to support people more in talking about that is legit to be a little confused and to be overwhelmed and to be struggling emotionally, mentally because of expat life right yeah yeah, yeah. I, I sometimes use the word untethered because yeah. i sort of yeah. feel like i'm yeah 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 culturally untethered yeah. i feel like i'm sort of linguistically yeah emotionally <laughs> sometimes untethered to yeah. it's uh, a good word 
American Undertaker. culture now, yeah. uh, whether it's current events or keeping up with even just my family sometimes. And then I feel a little bit untethered to Denmark because I, yeah. mm. as much as I can learn these unwritten rules mm-hmm. and I can jump into these cultural experiences, mm-hmm. I still feel like, uh, you know, a, a stranger sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or like I'm not doing it precisely right. And I yeah. feel like it sticks out yeah. or that it's a little bit inauthentic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I lose a bit of my personality that way too. And I think that's really important to talk about and to mention that we do get a little lost. I mean, Joseph Campbell has this, like, I really like this lost in the woods. We're like, Mm. kind of like, whoa, or stuck in the belly of the whale or whatever we can call it. It was like, we're fumbling, right? And, And I did that for years. I was like really trying to get hold of something. And then that's also part of, human personal growth uncomfortable as it is right it's like you stretch you grow and it's not always easy and it's not always a good feeling and that's okay too right but it i think it's also you know it's it's interesting because it really lies in that global mobility lifestyle global mobile life right that a byproduct of that can be that untethered yeah. is that the word yeah, right yeah. sort of a little bit of mm, here there and everything this so so the term third culture kids yeah. a- applies to adults as well okay. right mm-hmm. yeah. yeah so this kind of sense of belonging to a third culture not really danish not really american not really mm, but a little bit of Floating something somewhere in the north something Atlantic. third <laughs> right something connected my kids have it right mm. especially yeah. the two older ones Definitely. that grew up internationally yeah. sort of relate more to other young kids that are also somehow um, not entirely from Gentoft or not entirely right. Danish, right? I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. so glad you brought that up because yeah. I'm I'm very curious mm-hmm. um, that <laughs> that untethered feeling is kind yeah. of how I feel as an yeah. adult. But I yeah. I have I think the the skills to dissect that, mm-hmm. be self aware, mm-hmm. and find uh, some survival <laughs> in yeah. that. I'm curious, you know, Annie, on uh, yeah. with, with your children and, and Nana, like, I, mm-hmm. I know your your children have since mm-hmm. moved back, but mm-hmm. how that kind of manifests with, with, with the kids mm-hmm. and what, um, as parents, uh, we can can look for I shouldn't say we because I'm not no. one but what our listeners should what our listeners should look for or how that can yeah definitely and actually that is also a conversation that is often there when I speak to couples because a lot of the couples that I see do have kids mm. so I prefer to talk to the parents yeah support yeah. them supporting their kids and it's again this real sort of this this um in a way, the way I'm trained and, and also sort of what I my roots are in, working therapeutically with people, working to sort of support their personal development, is that at the source of all human suffering is the loss of connection. Mm. Mm. So the loss of connection in words and the loss of connection to the people that matter, right? Your parents, your siblings, your your kids. So the, 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 the real sort of important close people close to you right and again it's this sort of without being too theoretical and too boring sort of but really sort of anchored in attachment theory right we're born Ooh. to attach i mean you've got right, young yeah. kids you can i i guess you can relate when you just yeah. had your youngest right yeah the, the children it's by a lot we're biological beings we need attachment to survive and so bad attachment is better than no attachment mm. and so it really starts early And in the sense of bringing that into the expat life and this globally mobile lifestyle, sometimes what happens is that children, uh, third culture kids experience sort of repeated sense of loss, repeated sense of loss of identity, loss of friends, loss of recognizable places. And depending on age, they react differently. And it's funny that you bring it up because I can't help thinking about the comment I made on your post the other yeah. day on your channel about yeah. put, yeah. which yeah. is that, how do we translate put to English? It's yeah. like, never mind, or I don't yeah. know. Yeah. It's a significant Danish word. Yeah. And so if we say put to everything that our kids are bringing up yeah. of their emotions, right? There, there as many puts as no, yeah. no, no. Right in Danish, it's like put put and yeah. put med det og ej put nummer du også hold op med og, right. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of variations of yeah. put, but the the point is that n- not validating mm. 
their emotions creates this tetheredness yeah. in a way, right? That, yeah. oh, can't I trust that I really, really miss the US or right. why can't I talk about uh, my time in India or, uh, you know, how do I stay connected to my friends in right. um, Kenya? Mm -hmm. And so these kids grow up and experience repeated often, not everyone, but repeated sense of loss and yeah. goodbyes and uh, and it does require, I think, mm. parenting skills that are a little above uh, the mm. usual, right? 100%. I would say. Yes, yeah. yes, totally. Yeah. I think it's really enlightening. And um, what you're saying about, you know, why can't I express that I miss this and that? Mm -hmm. I know that my kids experience that, especially my oldest. But as kids, and especially depending on certain personality types, It doesn't always get expressed that way, you know. Exactly. And so then maybe in like a Danish classroom with a Danish teacher that's mm -hmm. never lived outside of Denmark. Yeah. They're Ooh. just like, oh, yes. Put, put me dead or whatever it is. Yeah. And so that, you put know. Put me yeah. yeah. And it really, oh, my yeah. God. That really, you know, when, when you express that on your channel, it's yeah. like, oh, ouch. This is like really a delicate question because. Yeah. Yeah. It, not even Danes can agree on that, right? But from my perspective, yeah. I would really take, you know, I wouldn't say put with two very, no. almost nothing, right? I would like yeah. put with if you spilled something, but right. it's still, right. oh, you're sad. Yeah. Okay. You wanted that it's drink. It's okay. Yeah. Let's yeah. put it, yeah. Anyway, it's mm. going so into a little smell. bit of detail, but I, mm. I really do think that these, um, these sort of echoes of growing up like that, sometimes I have grown up or adult clients that that sort of hear this for the first time and then they're like whoa now my struggles make sense i could uh. never put mm. you know i could never find an anger i could never put a place to sort of find a reason why do i feel like this why am i so ruthless why do i always seek for something else why mm. do i never feel at home anywhere mm. right and so the work there is for me to support them getting that intro personal anchor of connectedness to them mm. and then you can start connecting yeah to other people right uh -huh. does that make sense yeah, yeah, that makes so perfect it, sense it stays yeah. with them i guess yeah yeah it does i'm curious yeah. if you and i'm sure it applies i mean the way that you would apply this would be so different according to people's personalities mm -hmm. but do you have any ways that you encourage people to connect with themselves Definitely. Yeah. I love that part because oh, that's where we connect body and mind, yeah. right? So that, again, depending what people show up with and some people, like you say, transitions can actually trigger some vulnerabilities or some traumatic experiences mm. or mm. all kinds of things, right? On a wide range. It doesn't have to, but it can. And so a lot of it is really to be able to recognize emotions mm. Mm -hmm. and also recognize sensations in the body where is it and then there's a lot of i mean I, i'm not a body therapist but i do a lot of body work in the sense of mm -hmm. being able to identify what where Incredible. in your body you feel what yeah and then i work a little bit with different type of tapping different type cool. of breath work different mm. type of grounding mm -hmm. and and then also I love there's a and again an American you guys produce a lot of smart people right yeah. James Barras who yeah. works with 10 <laughs> steps to joy which yeah. is also some you know really sort of being able to cultivate gratitude it's not that's this false positivity of, or toxic positivity of like everything is always yeah, great no I get it yeah. but really to sort of look for the 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 crack yeah. where the light gets yeah, in yeah, right yeah, like yeah. Leonard Cohen would say yeah so Yeah, it I do. Yeah. But yeah. it's for some people this is a slow process totally. work. For others, they need a few sessions of like, whoa, okay. Some might just need to listen to a podcast and, and yeah. hear oh, that okay. they're yeah. not alone. <laughs> yeah. Right? For me it was yeah. really discouraging and this even just started when I became a mom. Mm -hmm. It was very discouraging to me at first to realize how much time and practice it took to identify these feelings in your body before mm -hmm. instantly reacting you exactly. know what i'm saying mm -hmm. yeah now yeah. It, but with practice like anything makes perfect so now yeah. something comes up i get a feeling instead of you know instantly acting out i can stop oh breathe i'm with you there yeah my club too time. but yeah. i think that's the human journey right totally that's, that's just being able to get to know who we are right mm -hmm. yeah. tap into that honor it understand what kind of effect our sort of function even you know the function 
of our emotions of, and behavior and what effect it has on other people and on ourselves mm. and to have that awareness. And then I also sometimes it's again, it's a little bumper sticker, but I think it's easy to remember a Harvard professor. I think she is Susan David, who says emotions are data, yeah. not directives. Mm. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So you don't have to react on your emotion, but that's tough not to, yeah. right? Like you yeah. say, so hard. and that's where we work with body work, yeah. breath, yes, tolerance. Yeah, right. It's a muscle. Yeah. It really it's is a muscle. muscle. It See, really we can is. get that straight. That's obviously. so insightful. Yeah. It takes so much <laughs> time and practice. Our data, yeah. not directive. Yeah. yeah, I love it. Yeah, I'm wondering if we can yeah. um, sort of stay on that uh, idea of the the third culture kids. I think it's fascinating what mm -hmm. you said of how that can stay with them. Mm -hmm. We did get a question from a listener to uh, has some concerns about how their child is yeah. adapting. Um, yeah, and they they kind of wanted some advice on on the language as well mm -hmm. as sort of the the making friends aspect their, their child is dealing with. Um, he said, my name is David. I moved to Denmark from London in July with my wife, Julie, and my two-year-old and nine-year-old who are now in Danish public schools. Mm -hmm. My two-year-old is adjusting well, but my nine-year-old is struggling significantly in a class that's designed for immigrant children to learn Danish. They often feel isolated, unhappy, and at times downright miserable. Mm -hmm. Sadly, they've only made one friend who has since moved away. It's very oh. hard to see as a parent. And Julie is especially having a difficult time seeing our eldest struggle socially. We've mm. tried involving them in sports, but it hasn't helped much with their social connections. We'd like our children to learn Danish, but considering all this, should we persevere with the current setup in hopes that they'll improve or transition to an English-speaking school, mm -hmm. uh, if that would be more beneficial for their emotional well-being? Oh, um, wow. Yeah. Nine years, yeah, that's a tough one. had this uh, a bit as well with mm -hmm. the school. Yeah, choice. yeah, school mm -hmm. can be tricky. I really yeah. lucked out in that my kids started started in Bernaheo and learned mm -hmm. Danish that okay. way. Mm -hmm. So while language-wise, they were able to adapt quite easily, still there was the cultural, but I'm mm -hmm. curious to hear what you would say in terms of the language piece because it is so complicated. That's a really, that, yeah. oh, it's a tough one and it goes straight to my heart because my yeah. oldest, she was, I think, six, seven, almost seven when we moved to Switzerland and she was enrolled in a Swiss school and mm. that was really tough. Okay. Mm. So I wouldn't advise based on my own personal experience as such. But what I think is important is, again, really to support parents in seeing uh, where does it become difficult to support the child's emotion and validate that this is tough. The emotional regulation of really allowing that this sucks. It's yeah. mm -hmm. really tough to enter a new school it's tough to enter in new, into a new school in a new country. And again, I think it's it all depends also on how long are you going to stay? What's your, you know, what's your mm. perspective there in sense of how many transitions are good? I'm not afraid of transitions personally. I've moved one of my children quite a few times from different schools. It can be quite traumatic for children to experience that type of loneliness and if there's bullying or whatever the situation is, I don't know, obviously, from what you've just presented. But I would definitely take the the, the emotion serious and yeah. and really validate and talk to teachers about this and, and seek out some support to figure out how do we navigate this? How do we support our child in this tough transition? Because there's mm -hmm. also some learnings there, but when you're just nine, you know, yeah. you don't, you you can't do those learnings on yeah. your own. You need support from parents and teachers. And again, it it depends on. I would say it's too difficult to give a straight up totally. advice. Yeah. I mean, I would be careful with that. Yeah, but, yeah. But I, as I say personally, I'm not afraid of transitions. I'm yeah. not afraid of taking my kids and moving them to a better environment. If yeah. it's a if it's an environment right. that's bad, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I would, I would, I would need to know a bit more. But I would say no child should have such a tough and the transition. Language, the language can come. Yeah. Later. Yeah. yeah. Or well, okay. So <laughs> what I want to say about yeah. that is advice I would give mm -hmm. is that. We struggled in a school for a very long time, and I just really uh, put away my parental maternal instincts mm -hmm. trying to accommodate and acclimate to what I thought was the culture. Exactly. And then oh. I went on to find out, like asking around eventually after a few years, yeah. this isn't normal. You don't have to tolerate this, you know? Yeah. So I think it is such an individual decision. Like, is this really a bad environment? Yeah. Um, or is it like a workable situation? Are your t like are the teachers or the administration 
listening and modifying and Absolutely. you know like accommodating you know yeah and i want to add to that mm -hmm. like you say you try your best to adopt to the culture you yeah. try to see to fit in is it us and i totally recognize that when had a horrible start in school my oldest daughter yeah. and yeah. we moved her after one year in that first school and Honestly, I should have done that earlier. Oh, exactly. And I should have kept exactly. her home. Mm. And had it been in 100%. Denmark where I knew the, the cultural codes, right. I would have kept her home. Exactly. I was in Switzerland. They fine parents for not sending oh, yeah. their kids to school. Like, <laughs> Sorry, Swiss. I love you guys. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. but and for doing laundry on a Sunday. They yes. Yes. For oh, there are lots of stuff. So I have <laughs> tons of stories. So, you know. I had no idea. But I would say this is maybe the advice I could give is mm -hmm. like, Take note of what Annie said. Take note of what is going on. Is it your fear of being judged? Your fear mm. of not accommodating to Danish culture that is keeping you from, mm. for instance, taking your child out of that situation? Mm. And then I would just go with your gut feeling. Mm -hmm. Trust that. Yes. Again, back to the, mm. the authenticity. This doesn't feel right. Probably yes. isn't right. Because they're still right? your kids. Even you know. though you're in a new country, probably isn't right. So you know we're all different our, our our we have different expectations but i think mm -hmm. the 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 gut feeling of parents and the intuition yeah. is uh, so always valuable. spot on but we don't always listen to it because we're so afraid of judgment and we mm. want to fit in and we want to accommodate to culture and systems and values and i don't know what each child is different a unique personality and I would support the child first and foremost. Mm. Absolutely. And then figure out the rest. But exactly. I mean, a tough one, a really yeah. tough it one. Go tough. straight yeah. into my yeah. heart because totally. I've been and there. Same. And, same. and yeah. I, will, I want to say yeah. to add encouragement. So we had this issue at our initial school mm -hmm. And when I brought it up to the staff, it was very much like, well, that's just the way it is. That's how kids yeah. are. And mm -hmm. then we ended up actually, we switched schools, had a mm -hmm. similar issue. And we're just like, oh, God, here we go again. Mm -hmm. We talked to the staff and they're like, we hear you. That's not OK. Exactly. We're going to address it. Yeah. You know, so it's not, you know, it's yeah, just to be seen and heard and validated in that way. Absolutely. You need that as a parent. Yes. Your child deserves that. Um so it's not that you're always going to have this absolutely perfect situation school-wise, but if you have a staff and, you know, teachers that are going to listen to you and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not like yeah, uh, brush absolutely. it under the rug. It's really important. Mm. And I really do think this is, uh, we could do a whole podcast on <laughs> this really? theme, right? Oh, because yeah. I do think that a lot of parents get caught in this. I have a whole process of sort of parenting between cultures because... Um, it, that is a tough one, but I would always look at each individual child's well-being mm. mm -hmm, first mm -hmm. and foremost. Absolutely, it's so hard, especially with your first child, right? Because oh, you don't impossible. know what you're doing. Right. They're just the trial kind. Of kid, I right? feel so bad. Sorry, kids. I know. Sorry, yeah. buddy. You're yeah. doing amazing. <laughs> anyway, okay. <laughs> And we're going to take a break here and be back in your feed with Nana next week. We're going to keep the conversation going by talking about what it's like to repatriate and move back to your country of origin, how you can stay connected to your culture and your country of origin while living in Denmark, and more of the challenges that expats in Denmark face while working in Denmark. Thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you next week.